fundraiser thing, but hopefully we can avoid football season if possible. Or well, that would mean we'd have to do it like now, and I don't know that we're ready for that. For so summer. summertime. I don't know that I can get ready for that. That's what I'm saying. Like that's only I know I'm telling you I cannot. There's we no have way so much stuff in my summer is packed. So summer's out. Yeah. There's no way. So that's what I was like trying to decide when I was thinking about this. Like, do we do something hey, later this year yeah. or do we do something early next year? That's kind of what I was wondering. Early, like, yeah, we could do it like early next year. Like yeah. February? Uh, February, I'm going to Walt Disney World because our cheerleading squad is going to nationals. Well, it, that would, oh, okay, well. I could do we it. could do well, it, though, I mean, around that. Yeah. Yep. Do, 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 when are you going down? I don't know. I gotta look. I, okay. I gotta check the dates. I wouldn't be the worst. We just had tryouts this past week. I think. I think, I think like I think January. Yeah, I think February actually would be decent. Yeah. Look how small it's far enough away from it. Christmas so that people can feel comfortable donating again. Uh, maybe hopefully we can do a volunteer day again. Right. Yeah. I can't see my face. I can't either. That. I got. I don't want to see my face. Not that anybody wants to see my face. Okay. But probably probably so, like, that's pretty cool. Um, I can't see Mike. Oh, there I am. Hey, everybody. There you are. Everybody so yeah, we'll have to, let's pick a date here soon, and then the thing that we need to put out to people is that they can start volunteer. They can start donating, donating. and taking it over now because that's True. what. I had spoken with her about um, gotcha. that we can have a thing. We can we'll get. Thing. I'll get with her um, this week, hopefully. CC week. me on some of that just so I have her okay. contact information. Sorry, I did not CC you on this last one, but no, it's totally fine. I'll CC you on the next one. Sorry, my bad. Are we live? We Probably. are live. Okay. So you guys getting a little behind the scenes of what we do. So we always have about eight million things we have to do before we. Correct. Start. Exactly. <laughs> We Shout try to use our 15 minutes wisely. We do. Out, yeah, I know for real. Shout out to Lisa, who's usually in our um, uh, chat here from Mobile, Alabama, who is currently in the t Grand Casino Tower at Coronado Springs, who had a leak apparently in her room at Coronado. So they had to get in, they had to go into her wall. So she politely asked if, because they had to access her room. Oh. She joked around with them. Can I, could, well, since you have to be in my room, could, could I just get upgraded? To uh, the tower, and bam! Did she just put a picture of her uh, room in the in the Discord? Nice. There you go. Yeah, water viewed Grandestino Tower. So roll tide. She's there you in the go. room, looking good. So I just saw that. Got some polls going on over there. So we last night our 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 thing was on the call in show. Let me ask you to this. I'll wait. I'll wait till the show starts. We'll put on the we'll put, right. we'll put on tape. We'll put on tape. Okay, so let's do. So we need listener questions. So people come on in with questions. Uh, I don't see any comments. I see people are tuned in. Oh, uh, I, st I don't see anything. I just oh. see. Oh, there we go. Ah, people are here, but people are being. So they're playing. They're no, it had it set up so that I could only see brand stuff first. So well, they're, they're giving us the silent treatment today. Yeah, clearly, yeah. I, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> quit, quit being mean, people. Oh, there's example banner. I can, I can, I can mess up some stuff for you, Mike. I'm just joking. I wish. <laughs> oh, what's going on? It doesn't seem like everybody's here today. Well, today, it is Monday. People are quiet today. We don't have mm -hmm. a crowd. A lot of people are at Walt Disney World. Huh. Well, we have an inbox. That's true. I mean, we are getting close to you know the the. <sighs> Why are you always yawn every time we do it? You, like you know how like it's like what Pavlov's dog or something? Like, I know. It, it's like you ring the bell. I need Taco Bell. I know. Exactly. That's exactly what I think I I have. Like I think I'm just like I I start podcasting and I'm like, <sighs> yeah. Yo quiero Taco Bell. I did not have coffee again today because I had to go pick up the cat from uh, the vet. So because he had to he had to be um boarded. So. Yo quiero Taco Bell. I'm not eating the cat. So. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Did you not hear that? Yes, I can hear it. Yo yes. taco I'm Bell. ignoring you. <laughs> I was going to tell you, I was going to keep doing it until I got a reaction out of you. I, I was, can hear I, it. I was gladly ignoring you. The guy and his toys. 
I oh my god! Like Lord, you gotta respond. No, I don't. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> that just brings me joy. Okay. Uh, doesn't okay. take much. No, uh, it doesn't. Not oh, real. goobers! Oh, they're playing the game where you got to match the two prices now. And then. What are you watching? The Price is Right, the Barker era. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, Fabergé. An egg? <laughs> no, it's like, it's it's like, like organic. Perfume. Oh. It's perfume. Yeah, something. I don't know what it is. Oh, that lady's outfit is rocking. She's got the feathered hair for show, Denise. <laughs> All right, let's do this. That's okay. good. Oh, this game's awesome. Hit me. I love that game. All you got to do is pick issue. the same. There's a, you got to play blackjack against the house. But the game was so simple. You didn't even have to play blackjack. All you do is pick two things. One had to be the exact price. The other one had to be 10 times the price. You won every time. Forget the cards. That's all you had to do. It was so simple. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, looking back, I could have I could have won a car every time on The Price is Right if I'd have gotten like, uh, the right game. I mean, it was not that hard. No, well, not I, I think the thing that made it hard was the variety of things that could be in the showcase showdown. True. Right. But I've seen, I, I mean, I watch this too much, but I've seen more than I remember double showcase winners. Oh. oh. Yeah. I feel, yeah, we don't get double showcase winners a lot nowadays, I don't feel like. Yeah. No. That's crazy. Because yeah. when you bid within 100 bucks of your showcase, that's wild. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's Let's do this. Before I start doing a fan, a Bob Barker fan podcast, before we know it, uh, what number are we on? Twenty four seventy one. Do we get close to twenty five hundred? Oh, that's nuts. We're sneaking up on. Bob Barker didn't use the didn't use the joke today <laughs> on one of the shows. They said he's a pet guy, right? He's a <laughs> guy, and he said, "Do you do you know how you catch a unique rabbit? You unique up on it." He said that. I was like, "Dude, he was saying that back in the eighties. And then he said, "What was the other one?" He followed up with one. He said. Do you know how you catch? Was it, there was a follow up that I'd never heard, and I was cracking up. It was funny. Oh shoot! I'm not gonna use it today. Oh well, I'll have to think about it. I wish I had DVR. I should have saved it. Anyway, here we go. It was funny though. The follow up joke was funnier because I hadn't heard that one. Okay, here we go. Oh, thank you, Deanna. God bless you. I bless Deanna in America. Here we go. Welcome to episode 2471 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel. Happy Wednesday to you. Hope you're having a great week and uh, you got a little jingle jangle left in your pocket after tax day on Monday. Maybe you got your refund. I mean... I don't know how you do it, but I'm one of those people that's always, uh, well, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of always worried about don't want to pay. I remember when I was, you know, had my first job. I started working when I was 14 at the skating rink. And so, you know, got a little under, the, well, I shouldn't say this guy, when Uncle Sam coming after me from when I was 14. But, you know, I, I just basically got paid in ding dongs and hot dogs and, and Pepsis behind the snack bar at that point. But, I remember, you know, you, you get that first paycheck, you know, the first time you're working when you're young and you don't get enough pulled out because you don't think you're going to work enough. I worked like crazy when I was like 14, 15 because I just like to work. I enjoyed my job. I was a DJ at a skating rink and I just got free soda and hot dogs and got to hang out at the skating rink and play music. What was there not to like, right? Worked a ton of hours, made a lot of money, but I didn't set up my taxes right on that first, you know, part-time job. <laughs> Boom, get, get hit with like, oh, and a bunch of tax when you're 16. I still have nightmares from that now that I'm 50. So now I always overpay my taxes. So what I do, I get a tax refund now. And that's, you know what I call that? That's the, we go on vacation to Walt Disney World or take a cruise every summer. That's what I use for my vacation fund. It's like the old Christmas fund back in the day that I think my grandma used to use. We used to go up to the <laughs> savings and loan and do the Christmas club. I, I just so let the government make some interest and, you know, hopefully fill some potholes around St. Charles County on how you do it. But, um, that's how I see it. And hopefully, you know, you, you've survived tax day and we're here on a Wednesday and, uh, we're all making it through together. So that's my little story to get us going here, uh, in mid April. So joining us today, we have Ricky. She's over at the mouse for less.com and at Disney world after all.com. Ricky, 
did the government shake you dry or uh, did you get a little uh, bonus in April? What, how oh, you I never, I never get a bonus in April. I always, <laughs> why, why did I, I guess that? Why did I, I always, I always owe money. Uh, <laughs> I would like, I, I think that like you could look at people, like if you know people, you could probably guess like, it's like a game, right? Refund or owe? Yeah, yeah like, no. Guess who like overpays or who like underpays? No, I like I like holding on to my money until the very end. So like <laughs> we, the only reason we actually did our taxes like uh, last weekend instead of this weekend was the fact that uh, um, we were going to Walt Disney World. So like that's we were like last minute people pretty much. I mean seriously, we wait until almost the exact day of tax pay. And yeah, no, we always owe money because yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm I not giving them a loan. I want, I'll give them their money when they're ready to get their money. I'm not giving them a loan. So I can't believe like you're giving me like, like I'm sweating bullets for you. Like no, that okay. makes me so nervous. I still remember when I got that, like, you know, you owe when I was like, no, no. 15. Brian, but you remember, so I'm married. I'm married to Mr. Fiscally Responsible, oh. so he sets up so that our, we have a because we have a budget. So he sets up our budget so that he knows that we're going to end up owing taxes at you know in April. So he sets up a, an amount that he's guessing we're probably going to owe. Oh. And yeah, you know, actually, we we I guess in a way we we earned money back this year because we didn't owe as much as we thought we were going to. So that was a positive. So. I may end up getting my bathroom that I've been wanting for a while. Uh, I probably won't. <laughs> we're getting old because that's exci that's exciting times for us now. We're getting a bathroom. Oh my god, yeah. we're the oldest podcast on the internet. <laughs> Trust me, I would like a spa like bathroom. <laughs> what I have is not. So if I could have some extra money to pay for my spa like bathroom that I would like to have, uh, I'll, I'll take it. So yeah. Is it? Is it Please tell me it's one of those bathrooms it's got like the the tub with like the swing in door so you don't fall and hurt your hip. No, I don't. Right now I have just the basic tub, uh, so like it's you know it doesn't have any fanciness to it. So I, I actually want just a shower, no okay. tub, just a shower. That'll be that'll be five years down the line. So that'll be goals no, for you know twenty twenty nine. <laughs> All right. Also joining us, we have Pam Forrester, co-owner of the Magic for Less. Pam, please tell me you don't wait till like uh, zero hour to pay your taxes. I mean, no, Pam doesn't. I can guarantee no. you. It's making me uncomfortable right now. Well, I will tell you that they got put in the mail today. They always do. We could because as a business owner, we yeah. always owe money. Yes. Um, we have an like we pay quarterly taxes. Steve pays right. taxes throughout. I mean, it's a never-ending tax. Mid like, April to June, like it's not three months. I hate this whole cycle. Oh, I know because we have to pay what we Everything. owe for the year and our first quarter taxes yep. um, at this point. So, but we do have an account that we set money in, and we get the return back from our CPA at some point. But Steve will not mail them until the actual. <laughs> the actual Good day. job, Steve. And not go. only not only that, he used to write um in the memo line stop wasting my money <laughs> when he paid and i said you need to stop that you're going to get a spot in it <laughs> so he did not do it this year oh my god <laughs> I, 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 hang on hang on that makes me love steve even more i'm not gonna lie that whole story makes me love Steve even more. Yes. So, so we're very prepared for it. The money's always there, ready to pay. Yes, but... you're prepared, but you don't want to do it any earlier than you have to. No, exactly. No. Yes. They don't yeah. need any more time with my money. Than Correct. They have, so. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so God bless America. Let's go. All right. So let's jump into the Disney talk. We have questions. Deanna is here. She's always here. We love Deanna. She's just one of our great supporters. Thank you for being here today. She says, Need to decide what dinner to book on a pool day before we head to extended evening hours at Epcot. We're staying at the Grand and leaning towards Citrico's, but open to suggestions. So she sounds like she needs a fancy dinner. I'm out. I'm going to throw it over to Pam Forrester first. <laughs> Fancy Just call me Pam, Pam Fancy Dinner Forester. <laughs> <Hey, love it. laughs> yeah. No, I think the Citrico's is a really solid choice. I mean, I love the the update that they did to this to this restaurant with the mary poppins theme and whatnot i will say that i am more partial to narcoosies than citrico's i think citrico's is very good but there's just something about narcoosies that i really really enjoy i i really like the restaurant since they redid it 
I also think that, um, you know, it just has that fantastic view. And then the other thing is check out the menus of both and see if one appeals to you more than the other. Um, that should be your guide too. And because you're on the monorail resort, you also have all the restaurants available at the Contemporary and um, at the Polynesian too, if one of those sort of fit the bill. The other one I was going to suggest, just because of the, if they wanted to go like directly over, that's it's one of your favorites. Actually, it's usually at the top of your list, Flying Fish, mm. right? Would that be a, a yeah. possibility? Agreed. And then you can just walk into Epcot. I think Flying Fish is fantastic too. That potato wrap snapper is so good. Um, but Steve always says it's one of the best steaks on property, really and truly, is that Flying Fish. Their scallops are fantastic. Look at this. Like I've, I have the, yeah, the menu in my are... memory. <laughs> like... you're, 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 you just see the Deanna and now you're giving them the chef special. <laughs> I know, right? Um, their drinks are great. So lots of good things to choose over there too. Um, yeah, absolutely. Ricky? I think you guys picked two of the best options. Uh, you know, either, well, or three, I guess I should say, of Narcusi's, Citra Coast, or Flying Fish. Um, you know, we just had Flying Fish for... Um, my brother's reception dinner. Um, and uh, I, it was my first time having the uh, snapper, red snapper that Pam has talked so much about, and it was delicious. So I, I that too, sauce, right? Yeah. Don't you want, I like, you want a little cup of the sauce. I, I do. I know. I wish there was maybe a little less of the, um, uh, oh my gosh, what's the, it's the onions, but they're the not leek called fondue. leeks. It's, yes. I wish there was a little less so leeks. It's so good. But oh. I mean, I like the fondue part of it. Just a little less leek would have been nice. Uh, but yeah, it was so good. Uh, I very much enjoyed it. Uh, and I, I would probably, if you're going over to Epcot after anyway, I might, I might say lean more toward the flying fish option. So I think that's going to be a really good choice. Score one for Mike. Who's never, yeah, who, who knew Mike would come up with something that was actually, I listen, you know. I, I've never been to flying. Fish <laughs> yeah. I was going to say he listens cause he's never been there in his life. <laughs> I do want to go there, but you know, again, it's hard to get my wife and girls to go to a place called flying fish. I don't like seafood. They, they, they have a hard time just walking. They have a hard time just walking past Cape May because of the smell. But I'm that's sorry. different. Cape May literally has a buffet of flavors. Crab legs. Of seafood. The, yeah. Crab seafood. legs and clams <laughs> and, on the, and like, mussels are sitting right those there. Those are going to have a more potent smell than, I mean, I walked into Flying Fish and I don't think I remembered smelling fish ever. So, mm -hmm. no. That's so pretty. Yeah, it's know, gorgeous on the inside. There. All right, Sarah's got a question in the inbox. Hey, Mike, longtime listener, first time question asker. I'm trying to decide between visiting Disney World this July with my soon to be two year old while I'm in my second trimester, or wait until next July when my oldest will be will be soon to be three year old while his brother will be nine months old. Is either option worth it? My oldest is as loud and rambunctious as they come. No shame at all. We love his spirit. <laughs> oh, it's good. <laughs> and I'm not sure if waiting another year would help him like the park more or if going at either time is just going to be hard for him. Truthfully, he'd probably be happier playing with rocks and monster trucks for a week rather than instead of a theme park. My husband and I are longtime Disney goers, but this would be our first trip since our children. I want to go. I wanted to post this question uh, in the BR Guest podcast group. Couldn't find a way to do it. I'm very interested to hear what you guys would think and what your experiences have been. Uh, do, you, do you, what do you think our kids' experiences would churn out? So she wants to know what would you do? Would you go now or would you wait until he's almost three? Because she's in her, she says she's in her second trimester now. Yeah. And it would be July also. Oh, but I mean, we, so Pam went down. I'm trying to think Mallory was born in January. We celebrated our anniversary. It was Disney world. And that was in June. So she was pregnant, but that wouldn't, I guess that'd have been in wouldn't, the like, wouldn't she be like, if she was, if she's in her second trimester now, wouldn't she be like almost ready to pop in July or would she have had the baby by then? 
I can't do the pregnancy. I know, I can't add the math. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if that's the case, or is she going to be in her second trimester? I think she's and going to be in her second That's trimester. where I was like, I don't think she'd be able to go in July if that's the case. Um, as someone who has been the most recently pregnant, uh, Mike definitely has, hasn't. So um, <laughs> I would probably suggest waiting until next year. Um, just because the parks are going to make you so tired out. Um, you know, being in your second trimester is not easy for sure. Um, and I think that you'll have just a, a little bit better of a time with having the, your son with you as well as both two, both sons, I think, right. Is what she said. So I would, mm -hmm. I would think you'd have a, a better time with that, um, than trying to, you know, force yourself in that second trimester. I, I just think you're going to be way more exhausted than you think you're going to be uh, in the park. And, you know, having a, a rambunctious son already is going to add to that. So I, I think I might wait. That's just well, me. It, it, and I think she's worried about like her son being more like, you know, excited about playing with his toys and, you know, like, that's True. appropriate. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think a two year old is going to understand the abstractness of we're going to Walt Disney World. We're going to a place that's a theme park. We're going to get to meet characters like that. Th that's not age appropriate. Like they're not going to understand that kind of an experience at that age. So when you go there, of course, they're going to I think you would have a good time with you. Oh, absolutely. You can have a good time. But yes, the probably the thing he will enjoy the most is, and she mentioned maybe staying at Pop Century, is the pool, you know, and probably playing on the playground at Pop Century. That's probably what he's going to want to do more than going to the Magic Kingdom and riding rides. But that's not your kid. That's every kid at that age. Pam, I mean, can you speak to that, do you think? I, I, I don't So I will say that my advice is always to go and take right. a trip and not yeah. to put it off there's That's just true. too many things that get in the way that and then you don't have those experiences and i think it's a rare child that doesn't find something to connect with on a disney vacation in particular and the other thing i always like to point out is that so much of travel is sort of helping your child learn how to learn things in different ways and exposing them to different things, which really opens up a lifetime of being exposed and learning different things. And the other part of travel is the experiences that you all get to have together. I think one of the things that just hurts my heart when people say it is, I'm not taking him until he's this age because yeah. he's never gonna remember yeah, exactly, it. And I'm yeah. like, um, for the first, I don't know how many years of your child's life you spend time doing things that they're never going they're to They're never going to remember, yeah, exactly. And the reason why you do that is, is to help shape them into the little human being that they become, but for also for you to remember and mm -hmm. for you to connect based on those things. So I, for me, that's why I'm always of the mind of taking the trip. And I, I don't just say that with kids. I say it with take the trip with your parents, take the trip with your siblings, take the trip with friends, take Take the trip i just there is so much to be gained from that so that's why i say it i completely understand that sometimes traveling um you know when you're pregnant is not always the easiest but the second trimester is actually probably one that's of the better true. times to go the first can be dicey i, I wouldn't know that but you know <laughs> then the last can be challenging too for different reasons and then after a period in time your OBGYN probably won't want you to travel sure. so that's something to think about the other thing is that sometimes when you have two kids it's it is doubly challenging um, and so that's something to take into effect too. Although I do find babies are really easy typically to travel with if you can't. They are, Wait, schedule, they right? are easier than toddlers. So, they uh, are, they are for sure. Um, but yeah, lots of things to think about. I don't think there's any right or wrong answer though. Um, you know, go when you feel is going to work the best for you. That's good. Good advice. Babies were easier. Once they start to have a mind of their own and they get mobile. Yes. <laughs> hey, that's, that's what that's, that's what we're getting with Lucy. It's starting yeah. to get fun over here. <laughs> and you know, it's not bad taking two kids, is having have them eleven years apart. <clears throat> yeah, well, yeah, yeah right. Helps. <laughs>
Anyway. All right. So this next question, hang with me on this one, because this came from a guest who the first part of the email was Mike. I'm going on my cruise here next month, pay my gratuities because I need to get my gratuities paid for my cruise. So that's the first part of the email, but then it sparked a question for the podcast. So Jennifer writes me and she's sailing concierge. I'm so jealous on an Alaska cruise here next month. Nice. Oh, Jennifer, bring a podcaster. Come on, bring a poor podcaster with you. Anyway, she says, this is a potential podcast question slash topic. And it got me thinking about, uh, about it was the cruise gratuities above in our last trip. She says, I was blessed to stay club level at Grand Floridian. And we did keys to the kingdom, Sangria University, in Spanish tiles. I called in and gave a mini live trip report. We got into a, a, the Spanish tiles was a, that experience over at Coronado Springs at the up in the Dahlia Lounge. Mm -hmm. um, she says, we got into a discussion about all uh, who all we should tip and how much. What do you in the BOGP crew think about tipping and what is appropriate in these situations? I think most people know about tipping for dining, but what about this? Okay, so she gives kind of a list. So let me go through the list and we'll kind of just have a, like a, just a discussion in general. She says, additional tours, Keys to the Kingdom, Wild Africa Trek, Caring for Giants, Living with the Land. So I guess that'd be uh, not Living with the Land, but what's that called? The, uh, behind the Seeds. Behind the Seeds, yes, thank you, et cetera. I think it's known that if you do a VIP tour, you're expected to tip, but what about these other ones? Activities offered at resorts, Spanish mosaic tiles, the painting classes, etc. Sangria University and beverage tastings, both at the resorts and on cruises. Club level stays. Do you tip the bartender pouring the wines and the cast members who clear your dishes, etc.? Additional cruise gratuities, serving team hosts and concierge lounge, mousekeeping, front desk concierge, bell services, delivering bags to your room and holding bags for you. Transportation. Again, I think most people tip to and from the airport, Uber, Lyft, etc. Adventures by Disney tours. Again, I think this one is a bit more known, and I believe it may even be suggested on the website, but I can't remember. Any other situations I missed? Thanks. Uh, sorry, that's a lot of scenarios. So it might be more of a simple question and more of a whole topic. I think tipping is, tipping is one of those things people aren't sure about and are scared to mess up. And I think it could be something... That's too personal to talk about too, but I thought I'd throw it out there. As always, thanks so much for all your help and thanks to the BOGP crew for always keeping my dog and me entertained on our walks. Jennifer Fritz. And shout out to the doggy. So hopefully we're also keeping the dog. I love that. We not only keep humans entertained, we're also pet for friendly. Right. You know, and it, you know, I think it is kind of personal for tipping, but I think it is also something that is, if you're not educated and I'm one of those people too, like I want to make sure I always do the right thing, but there's a lot of situations that I'm not in frequently enough that I understand the, the, what is the protocol, you know, like what is like, do I tip this person? You know, what is expected? And I, a lot of times I probably Maybe I, I always, if I'm not sure, I always do tip. Like I'm one of those people that if I'm not sure I tip and I probably tip too much because I don't know, I just feel like it's better to, you know, it, it's just better to be nice than not, you know, like if I'm not sure I'll just give 20, 25, 30% tip. And maybe you're not even supposed to tip that person. For example, like with bell services, I don't even know if this is the rule. But like I tip the person that I give them. I say, so, okay, say like you get there early. This is okay. This is probably I, everybody's gonna be like, Mike, you're you're an idiot. Okay, so you guys drop your bags when you get there early and your room's not ready. Mm -hmm. Do you tip them when you drop your bags and when you pick up your bags both? Usually, yeah. Okay, because I don't know who's getting the tip, right? I mean, because like if I, I think it goes into a pool, 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 but yes, yeah. I've heard that, but I just don't want to like one guy to get jipped out of his tip. It absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, as far as I remember from working in a hotel, it absolutely gets pooled, and then they get okay. Because I mean, I, I've heard that, right? But I mean, I don't want to be. I always feel bad, like if I give my bags to some dude and I don't tip that guy. Well, you I know, think that's probably why it gets pooled now, is right, because right. they, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I always feel bad, like because I'm not giving this cat, like you know you know, I give like three, two, three bucks a bag. So like I give that guy a tip, like a 10 for like a few bags. And then, you know, when somebody comes to my room, I'll give him another 10. I mean, it adds up, but I mean, I figure here's my rule and this is just me. I'm not, I'm not preaching this to the choir. I'm not saying you have to do this, but here's how I've always looked at tipping. 
if you are lucky enough to get to go to a place like Walt Disney World, or if you're lucky enough to get to go to a, like on a Disney cruise, hopefully you have enough to, to spread the wealth a little bit with tipping. You know what? Like I, that's how I look at it. Like if I can help the people who are serving me to make this vacation better, I should, I should have enough put to the side where I can tip where I can. And if I, you know, the, my bartenders, my serving team, my room steward, you know, all these people that are helping me do things that I, that are going to make my vacation better, bring my bags. Cause slipping those bags around Coronado Springs is a hard job. I mean, if you're in the ranchos and they're dragging those suckers all the way out there, that's a long way. I mean, hook them up, you know, like it, it, that's just the way I see it. You don't have to see it that way. That's me. But Pam, how about these situations? What do you think? Like point some of those out, like, I don't know, club level stays. I've never done that. What, what do you, what do you do there? If the concierge is particularly helpful to us, like if they assist with something or whatnot, we definitely do tip that staff. Um, I can't remember if they have to be one that had to refuse it three times before they can take it or not. Um, not sure. But the other thing is too, if we get to know one of the club level staff too and spend time with them and whatnot, and we just find them to be helpful, we definitely will. We were just there not too long ago and stayed club level at Coronado. And I will tell you, the staff there is fantastic. Like spent time with us, talked with us, remembered us, all of that. And I, I think there's just, you know, there's a lot of room for that. Like you, I real, I feel very fortunate to be traveling there and I do want to make sure that I'm tipping the folks who are helping us. Um, you know, we tend to over tip wait staff just because it's like, we're, just really appreciative of the of the time that they spend caring for us and it's that kind of position so so i will say at restaurants i let pam do the gratuity because pam worked for years and years as a server like she even when she was a uh, her first three years of teaching at night she worked at a mexican restaurant and she worked at applebee's both as a server Mm -hmm. And she knows how hard it is to do that job. So she definitely compensates servers well, but I always give, like, I just hand her the credit card because <laughs> she always, you know, I'm like, you, you know, this and you got this. So a restaurant, she's always in charge of gratuity. And she, I just tell her, give what you give, what, whatever you think's right. And she, I mean, she, like, she starts, I think at 25% because I mean, it's, a, she's like, Mike, it's a harder job than you even know. Like it's because it I'm like, I, I don't know. I never did it because I always say I'd like to do that for a night. Like at the, like at LS Tucka, I'm like, I'm, she's like, you don't want to do that. She's like, you couldn't do that. <laughs> like, you, like, you know, like when you're working on the couch, she's like, I, she's like, I'd pay money to see you working. <laughs> I mean, like, she's like I mean, running the chips and salsa. She's like, I would pay so much money to see you on a Friday night at LS Tucka. You would be done. I'm like, no, nah, I can do it. I could swing some fajitas. She's like, it's so hard. Anyway. Ricky, what do you do philosophically with tipping in all these positions? Like what, what do you like? What do you guys like? What's your rule? What do you think? Yeah, um, actually, it was a kind of interesting. I had a conversation with um, my brother in law, um, Kevin, this weekend. He's actually a bartender at Margaritaville at Universal. And, you know, we were having a conversation about, um, you know, people were asking him about different drinks and things like that. And he was assisting them and, you know, trying to help them. And it was a, it was a larger party and like, they, they didn't even like leave him a tip at all. Um, you know, and you know, he is, he is, I mean, I get it. Right. Because I mean, okay. In travel, right. I mean, Pam knows this, like there's a lot of times where we'll book a trip, you know, we'll spend hours and hours and the guest has to cancel. And when that happens, we get zero, we get zero right. we yeah. spend hours. I mean, it, but I mean, it happens. And that's just part of the job. Right. Of is course. Wrong when people do that. I mean, but yeah. not, not for us. I mean, we understand things happen for us, but I yeah. mean, like in a service industry like that, where the people are there and like people shouldn't do that, like at a bar. Exactly. You know, like, you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's kind of one of those things where, like, I mean, everybody should know. I mean, I would think that everybody knows, like, you know, at least a buck or, you know, whatever per. Not even a buck. That'd be worse. And oh, that, no, but at least it's something, you know, instead of nothing. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, I would rather have that than nothing. No. So, you know, that's kind of like my theory on that. Um, I used to work at Starbucks. 
Uh, I know there's a lot of like, you know, people who say, oh, you know, why are you tipping Starbucks or, you know, drink, you know, makers? It's a lot more, there's a, a lot more process to a barista than you think there is. Um, so, I, uh, you know, yes, we did get, we, we did get paid an actual wage, you know, not, not the, the, the server kind of wage, but, um, you know, I will tell you making Frappuccinos is the bane of my existence. They are not easy to do. So if you're ordering like 20 Frappuccinos, please consider tipping your, your, your baristas. Um, you know, just stuff like that. You got to think about the work that's going in extra work, maybe that's going into making whatever you're doing. Um, I'm not sure about the tours at Walt Disney World, I don't know if they can accept tips or, or if it's like the Pam things that what she said, you have to, uh, you know, try three times. Um, I'm not 100% sure about those. Uh, but other than that, like, you know, just make sure you take care of people, you know, they're, they're there to help you. Um, and, you know, just if you can, um, please try to do so. So well, here's, here's the thing, like I, you know, we always leave like $5 or, you know, a tip or something in the room for mousekeeping, but it's, it's, you know, it used to be like more straightforward 10 years ago. Right. Cause it was every day. Right. Oh, that's like, true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, so hit or miss nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it just feels like it was easier. Not that I don't want to keep tipping and I do, I leave it there, but a lot of times my room doesn't get cleaned every day. It, yeah. Right? That's always it's, actually it's um, a little bit more scary. You know, it, it used to be like more of a kind of a fun thing back in the day. Like I used to remember like you'd have envelopes and yeah, 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 like yeah. More of a fun activity. Now it's how, kind of housekeeping. Mousekeeping weird. is actually one of the ones that I go back and forth with Brian on um, because, you know, he's in the hotel industry. So I always, add, you know, we have this discussion a lot of times on, do you tip a housekeeper or do you not, you know, that, so that one, I, I, we go back and forth on so it depends on on what happens uh with our room and things like that uh, sometimes we do with that tip at that point and sometimes we don't it just kind of depends on you know that but he's in the industry so like i you know it's also one of those things where i, I we go back and forth about it all the time so <laughs> i don't ever we don't ever have a, a like set rule though on housekeeping for us so but it's so weird because like you don't have a con uh, well maybe you do i i don't that's my question you know like i do you probably don't have like a consistent housekeeper True. throughout your stay I would most assume. of the time i don't think you do uh sometimes i don't think do. so either so i think yeah. like if you're gonna tip you should do it Maybe every each, day each day yeah. yeah yeah so is there anything else in that list though that we didn't i mean like on the cruises obviously like for tastings and you go you do like a you do i mean just because they give you a bill at the end so right you immediately for stuff like that your room steward the good news about cruise line is you hook that up that's automatic like you're not going to miss but you can do additional that's i don't know if people know this I mean, if you have, and the thing is, I mean, I've not ever had like a room steward with Disney Cruise Line. And I mean, I'm platinum. I've sailed a few times. Like they're like ninjas. They're like, yeah, they are. Yeah. You, you'll meet them because they'll, you know, they'll come and meet you like on the, on, on arrival day, on embarkation day and ask you if you have any requests or, you know, they want to get to know you. But then after that, a lot of times you might see them in the evening, you know, like when you're coming back to your room between maybe dinner and, you know, going out for the night to have fun. But I mean, like you never see them like making your room into like the night mode. <laughs> I always call it night mode, right? Where like they pull your bed down, pull the bunk down. I mean, they're like ninjas, but the room is perfect all the time. And so, I mean, if you want to give them a little extra, hook them up, you know? No, absolutely. What about Cruise Line? Any, anything around there? They give you the envelope. So you, um, if you prepaid, if you prepaid gratuities, you'll have a little slip that you can put in the envelope, but you can also put extra cash in there. I know that sometimes people bring, um, things from home to give, uh, you know, to sometimes the staff there. So that's something to think about all your drinks. You're going to have a line where you can sign and your tastings too. You'll, there will be a gratuity line for that as well. That's dangerous because uh, you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. They know it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially after your tasting. <laughs> I'm sure well, they get tipped well. well. Do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a line item like when you're doing spa services and other things like that too. Um, did we hit on most of the items? Oh ABD, you absolutely will tip your guides. Um, there will, there is information that comes with your packet that talks about that. Mm -hmm. 
I think we touched on most of the things. But like the working said, do you know the rule for the like the tours, like like caring for giants? Like, I don't know that they can accept tips. I'm not sure. Yeah, that I'm they not can. sure that they can either. Yeah. What about like what about like photo pass photographers? Can you hook them no. up for Kim Taylor? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Th they, I don't know that they're cannot. allowed to accept yeah, tips. I yeah. So. I'm sorry. We tried. Yeah. <laughs> the best, let me let me just say this though the best thing to do for those cast members who cannot be tipped yes, is to make sure you do a cast compliment so mm -hmm. you can do it in the app or in my disney experience if you would like um but if you really want to go above and beyond which is what i suggest doing is go to guest relations and make sure that you um you know tell uh, them about um, what happened, who the cast member was and everything like that, because that will go in their file. And that means so much more to them than anything else. Trust me. Like it is huge when they get those cast compliments. And on cruise line at the end, at the end of the cruise survey, call them by name and, and explain why they made your cruise better because that's Absolutely. how they, that's how they move up through the ranks. And yes. that's, I mean, that's the ultimate goal for their next contract on cruise mm -hmm. line is just mm -hmm say them by name and explain why they made your cruise better that's you know because you talk about a short-term gain long-term gain that's long-term gain so that, mm -hmm. that's you know tip them but also do that say you know it's true xander my server was amazing and this is how i made my cruise better don't forget that and don't forget to turn it in because there was one crew i not kidding like we took all the time to fill that sucker out and like we were back at Walt Disney World, that thing was in my back pocket. I was like, oh, we, we mailed it, I think, like when we got back. But it's like one of those things because that thing's like a it's like a post like graduate. Yeah, know. I know. We did ours the last time and it <laughs> fell out of our out of like our bags. It was like on and I'm like, well, I oh, hope they found no. it somewhere. Someone put it there. <laughs> Oh, well, Alicia says we tried to tip the photographer to Lonnie because we asked for some extra photos and she would not let us. Yeah, some of them. And that's the thing. If the cast member tells you that they can't accept a tip, you can't push it too much because they could literally get in trouble for Correct. taking a tip if they're not allowed to. Disney has very clear, you know, you can tip this position, you cannot. So yes. that's the thing. All right. We have a listener tip. I love when our listeners have tips. So here is Magic Kingdom Fireworks at the Polynesian uh, from William. He's in Del Mar, New York. He says, my family and I just got back from nine nights at the Polynesian and spent the last four nights staying club level with a theme park view. It was amazing, of course, and we had a great time, but we learned something on our last night that I wish we knew heading in. It's well known that they pipe the music into the Polynesian beach for happily ever after. It's quite loud to watch the fireworks from the Hawaii building, but at 8.45, that's not a big deal with two young kids that go to bed right after or that he said it's not a big deal what i wasn't aware of is on nights where there's a special ticketed event at the magic kingdom they show enchantment at 11 45 and they also pipe the music in at the polynesian beach at the same volume it was loud enough to wake me up and would have been a welcome surprise on night one not so much on night nine but it's something that I think people should be aware of. One, because if you have young kids that might wake them up from loud noises at 1115, you might want to avoid rooms near the Polynesian beach on the Magic Kingdom special event nights. But two, this could also make for a really fun night for a couple of nights that enjoy, for a couple of adults that enjoy fireworks. Have dinner at Kona or Ohana, watch Happily Ever After Hour, Happily Ever After, mm -hmm. then head to Trader Sam's or Tambu Lounge for a couple of drinks, then head for Enchantment on the Beach. Great evening at the Polynesian for a couple of Disney adults. Anyway, just wanted to make you guys and the listeners aware of this because it's something that could be a hiccup for young <laughs> families, but could also be a great opportunity for adult travelers. Thanks for everything, Bill, Delmar, New York. So it's great because it has positives and negatives. You know, if you're adults, you want to see it, you know, a ticketed event there, have it make a night at the Polynesian, 1115, blast in some fireworks music. Hey, <laughs> Disney adults rock on. Four well, really? that's you true. Up, you know? <laughs> it is true. And I will also give one of my tips that we've always done. Um, tips for traveling with kids and just yourself. Um, they 
we when Hannah was little, we traveled with the sound machine. Of course, it's so much easier now to use one of the sound apps on your phone, but that takes away being able to hear all of the different noises that are, you know, something that you aren't used to hearing. In a hotel, there's always going to be noise that you're not familiar with. And being able to get a good night's sleep, I think, especially when you're traveling, is important. So if you sort of normalize the sound machine or a sound app or whatnot that um, actually takes a lot of that away. So uh, try that out, see if it works for you. Built right into your iPhone's <laughs> iOS. That exactly. Sound, oh, I love it. And the, the, the water sound has like birds chirping. I use it all the time. It is wonderful. You can, it's under, it's under the, uh, uh, not, not notifications, but the upper right-hand corner, if you just pull it down, if there's an ear, just click on the ear and it plays. Yeah. You don't download an app. It's part it of really app. helps. It do, I mean, it just really does. And it always made sleeping easier. I mean, especially, I think a hotel situation is so weird because it's like your whole family's there in that one room, right? Yeah. Many times. And it's like, that's not how you sleep at home. And, every, you know, there's different noises. Oh, there's different... Honest to God, that's the truth. Cause I have to have it dark. And of course, Mallory's got to have like her laptop because she's got to watch Netflix. I'm like, dude, it's lights out at 11 o'clock. She's like, yeah, I'm going to bed till one. I'm like, dude, it's lights out. It's lights out. Yeah. Quit. I get up at four o'clock. You're just, you're just nodding off. I got to run. <laughs> Knock it off. It's, yeah. Right. You, do, you learn way too much about your family on vacation. I'm telling you. It does. Yeah. It's, true. It's, you, you think it's fun. It's, it's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> Right. right. <laughs> Last question of the day. It's from, looks like Carly, Carly Lee. What's your question? Birthday trip. Hey, BRG crew. I'm lucky enough to be spending my birthday in Walt Disney World this June. I've never been for a birthday before. Wanted to see if you guys had any suggestions on what activities, dining reservations, or other add-ons I can do to make my trip extra special. It's just me and my fiance going, and we're staying at the Polynesian. This is Polynesian. Hey. Day. We're planning on spending most of our park days in the Magic Kingdom and Epcot. Also, we thought of adding on Hoop Dee Doo Review, but have never been, so we weren't sure if that's a good move. Thanks in advance, Carly. All right, Carly, so I'm going to tell you. At 11.15 on party nights, there's going to be music piped in. <laughs> <laughs> Go there. I heard that about 15 minutes ago. Um, no, that's pretty good. Though. But, uh, no, happy birthday in June. Uh, and um, So... What do we say? Hoop de doo, always a great. I love hoop de doo. Do it. It's. I mean, if you like any kind of like, I mean, it, it's folksy. But the food is awesome. Like if you like fried chicken, strawberry shortcake. Like if you like glorified Cracker Barrel food, but it's good. <laughs> and it's all you can eat, and you like free, like all you can drink, like sangria and beer and stuff. Rock on. Go over to in Fort Wilderness. You got to just get over there. Fort Wilderness is fun to visit. De I say definitely do that. It's worth it. Um, okay, one suggestion, Ricky, add on dining reservation, something like that before we wrap. Well, I have two because uh, I'm going to cheat. Uh, no. One is Trader Sam's. I think that that would be a lot of fun. So make sure, you, since you're staying at the Poly, I think make sure you do that. Um, and the second thing is, uh, I, you know, we, we talked about earlier about doing a, a tour or something like that. I think like a fun little tour to, that would be great is the Caring for Giants tour. Uh, the one with the elephants. I think that would be a really great. It's it's not super expensive, but you get a, a unique experience that's unlike anything else. So I'm gonna say to do that. There's also the rhino one too, but I mean, there's just something about elephants that I would just rather experience that one over the rhino one. But I think that they'd both be excellent. So that's my suggestion. What, what do you got against rhinos? I mean, I don't. But I mean, I like the big floppy ears of the elephants better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're, you're just an Alabama fan. Roll Tide. I like. No, it. I'm not. <laughs> so Lisa, Lisa approves down in Cornell Springs right now. Okay, Pam, wrap it up. Give her one fun thing to add on to her birthday celebration. I mean, she's already at the Polynesian, so she's 95 percent. Right. Away. I'm gonna cheat too. So yay. <laughs> Because I'm a do. It's what we've been doing for it's what, yeah. years. Hello. I'm not going to break tradition at this no. point. Um, so I think since you're at the Polynesian, you might want to try Ohana because oh, yeah. uh, people love the Ohana. And I think there's something to be said about embracing the resort that you're staying at and taking advantage of actually being there. And the other thing I was going to suggest, too, is consider the dining plan, especially if you're going to do some of these restaurant locations, because... 
they could it could actually save you money and the other thing it will do is help you pay for everything before you get there and then you have the convenience of that so for those um couple of things look into that and see if it works for you i, I have one more suggestion so here we go now we're cheating to another level. yeah now i'm totally i'm totally cheating to another level okay so on the my disney experience app because i forgot she's staying at the polynesian so before like before you go to bed do this one night they have the ability to mobile order and you can mobile order. I think it's uh, the, the, um, the bread pudding from Ohana. Do that one night, just <laughs> go back to your room, uh, enjoy, or maybe the Polynesian beach. I don't know, but enjoy mobile ordered bread pudding. I feel like there's just something fantastic about that, whether you're eating it in bed or on the beach or whatever, but mobile order bread pudding. Mobile order bread pudding, 11.15, go out on the beach, listen to it in chat. Hey, we're tying it all in. Look at us. <laughs> oh my God. Get a birthday cake. There you go. We put a candle in the bread pudding and have, have your fiance sing happy birthday to you. It all comes perfectly. Full right. circle. Perfect. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today's show. Thank you for the great questions. If you have questions, send those into the inbox. Mike at BeOurGuestPodcast.com. We'll get those in the queue and we'll answer those right away. You can also join us. We record usually on Mondays right around 530 Eastern. All the places, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Not too many people watch on Twitch, but you can if you want. We're there. Mostly people playing poker, I think. I don't know. I don't read video <laughs> games, but we, you know, we can go there. So we do. So there you go. All right. We are always sponsored by the Magic for Less Travel. That is the great place to go when it is time to get your itch. You want to go down to, to a Disney destination. You want to sail with Disney Cruise Line. We'll get you a great onboard credit. You want to go to Walt Disney World. We're going to make sure that you get the best discount possible and get you booking bonuses like Disney gift cards. I just had a guest today say, Mike, you know what? I kind of laughed about that travel laundry bag, but it was clutch. I said, I'm <laughs> right. You, clutch. That's the word. It is. It's clutch. It is clutch. I'm on my third one because I use that thing so much. I said, it comes in clutch over race weekends, man. When I have sweaty clothes, rocks. <laughs> Maybe we should be using that in our marketing effort. <laughs> yeah, probably. Hashtag clutch for <laughs> a laundry bag I mean, and I'm, almost everybody gets the laundry bag i'm just saying so yeah when you have tickets you're probably getting a laundry bag so just saying and we the thing is you're going to get these emails every week or two just to get you excited for the trip to make sure you don't miss anything like your dining reservation date just to, to give you ideas about what the climate's going to be about for your time of the year get you excited about hey what, what's going on in galaxy's head you know the bad too it, it's just fun. I mean, it gets you amped up. You're a Disney fan. It's good to get some pixie dust in your inbox. And all this, no cost to you. It's the same price booking directly through Disney. And it supports our show. It's like a win, 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 win times 10. So come on over. Book your next trip with us. We'd love to help you out over at themagicforless.com. Plus, also use our Amazon affiliate link. It's beourguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. Patreon.com slash beourguestpodcast. When you support us, $5 a month. And you get the bonus show. It's called Mike in the Midwest. This week, we talked about my first cell phones. I go all the way back to my first cell phone was a bag phone from at and It was a Motorola. And then I had the uh, the old, uh, it was a like a, the old flip phone that was like the singular one that, that was like a big brick and you just yep. closed up. And then I had the the Nokia, the, the it was called the candy bar that yep. everybody had. It stayed charged like a week. Then it met its demise in the, in the, uh, and the lazy river. I tell that story the day before our wedding. It's wild. And then I got on an iPhone. I got to meet Chingy, the rapper, in line. Oh, that's right. You did. What did you get when you when you become a patron? You get Mike in the Midwest. These crazy stories. So come on over to patreon.com slash be our guest podcast. Uh, don't forget you can hang out with us on the Discord, which is our be our guest podcast clubhouse. I posted pictures of all these phones over there for everybody. So just come on over, be our guest podcast.com slash discord today. The conversation never stops over there for real. I posted what I was having for lunch today on the Discord and a video because Mallory made the cheer squad for next year. Woo, yay. And so they all met up at the H immediately after making the thing on Sunday. They, they how crazy is this nowadays? I mean, you want to talk about stress? They announced the teams. They did this last year too, live on Instagram on a Sunday afternoon. Who made the team? So you got to tune in live on Instagram to see if you made the cheer squad. Dude, I'm, as a dad, I'm sweating bullets, you know, on Sunday. She made it. 
They all rush to the football field. They have their first team meal on the 50 and the football field. Pam's the vice president of the booster club. So she has to, she's in charge of the cookie cake. So we have these huge cookie cakes. I mean, the gigantic, like the old pizza pizza days, like with little Caesars, like they're huge. The girls didn't eat all the second ones. We have this big cookie cake left over and it's back at our house now sitting upstairs right now. So I put a video up there. So my Monday was pretty rocking when I went upstairs today at lunch and I saw that there was lots of cookie cake left over and it's on the discord. You get to see what it looks like. So I'm just saying, come on over to the clubhouse. Anyway, check it out. We're all on the social media. Ricky's at Ricky Nibs, R-I-K-K-I and I-B-S. I'm at BR Guest Mike. You can spell that. Pam's at TMFLT Pam. Twitter, Instagram, and threads. We'd love to talk to you over there. And we'll have our live show Sunday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central. Scott joins me, and we take your calls. Tons of fun. All right, we'll be back on Friday. Friday, we're bringing back Out of the Vault, one of our most popular shows from about five years ago. And it ties in with those Disney commercials. I'm telling you, I keep seeing. I saw just last night on network TV. We are watching something on, I think, CBS. And it's that commercial. It just keeps popping up with like the little girl. She's watching Frozen Ever After, and it says like 1.23 p.m. And I, it's just like, and it, then it shows the dad. He's just floating around the pool at uh, Art of Animation. It says like 3.23 p.m. So we're going to do right now at Walt Disney World or right now at Disneyland. And we're just going to give our favorite thing, because those things are always happening all the time, 365 days a year. And do an exercise in visualization of what we picture happening at the Disney parks or on the ships right now to kind of get your Friday started to kick off that weekend the right way. So come on along with us. We're going to take a virtual trip to the Disney destination. So ride right along with us on Friday. So come on back. We'll see you there. So until then, for Ricky and Pam, I'm Mike. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you real soon. All right, let's save that one. Episode two four seven one. Uh oh, I'm fighting it. I'm fighting this knees. <laughs> it's hot here today. It's ninety. It's hot here too. We had crazy storms here last night, like it's, hail. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was uh, it was really wild. It's insane. Hell no. <laughs> I'm so funny. I'm punny. No. We're that was a now. great dad joke. That was, they you know, happen in my house all the time. <laughs> I've had experience. <laughs> experience dad joker. Woo, 85 in Virginia. Wow. It's, it's hot everywhere. Yeah, that's what um, we had too, William. We had some major hail. It was craziness. And what was so weird is we were on the edge of the storm. So out the front of the house, you could see the storm. The back of the house was still sort of sunny. It was the weirdest thing. And then we sat and watched lightning for a while. Wow. That's the best, though. I mean, it was like it's you're not so crazy. Yeah, it's so it crazy. Long. I'm old, but yeah, I love watching swords. Uh, let's delete Jennifer's email so we don't do that one again. Okay. Here we go. So this is 2473 because I'm doing this without even writing stuff down. This is dangerous. What? I know. Because now when I'm editing, I'll forget what show's numbers they are. Totally. <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna hose me in like a half hour when I can't remember things. because uh, I'll publish the wrong shows in the wrong order, probably. Okay, here we go. Welcome to episode 2473 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from Be Our Guest Podcast.com. And one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel. Happy Friday to you. Yes. Tell that to somebody on your way into work today. Happy Friday. It just sounds good. Happy Friday. We made it to another weekend here in mid-April. Hopefully the weather is great for you. We had awesome weather all week. And then this weekend, highs in the 50s. What's going on? We had like 90 degree weather all work week and now it's going to cool off for the weekend. But you know what? Who cares? It's the weekend. We're going to have a good time and we're getting there. 
by talking some Disney. And today, again, like I said on Wednesday, we're bringing back one of our more popular shows from years back. And it ties into a marketing campaign that Disney's doing right now. And I am not kidding. They're, they're bringing this marketing campaign right to us. And by us, I mean all of us right here listening to this show. Because they, they know they've got us. And when they put these little images, these little snippets on our TV, they're like, oh, I got to be there. Like, I, I know that little girl's watching Frozen Ever After. I, I know that dad's floating around in the big blue pool. And guess what? They know that we know that if he dips his ears below the surface of the water, there's music playing underwater in that pool. Oh, now, we're, we're the only ones that know that. Like noobs, they don't know that. It is he's just floating in a, in a hotel pool. No, 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 no. We know what pool that is, and we know that there's music playing below the surface of the water. We know that if he walks right across the Generation Gap Bridge, he can get a tie-dyed cheesecake. We know this stuff. You know that. I know that. And you know that I'm getting ready to introduce Ricky because she's from themouseforless.com and a Disney World after all.com. How smooth was that, Ricky? What's up? I have no words for I'm good at this. Look at that. I, I didn't know where I was going with it, but I brought it in like a smooth landing. Sure. I tried. It was, it was a landing of some sort. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am actually looking forward to tonight because I get a date night with Brian tonight. So um, I am very excited to have a lovely evening and uh, and we're going to uh, celebrate uh, his hotel. So that's a good thing. So I get to get all dressed up and the theme is masquerade ball and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm excited about tonight. Date night, date night. Woo, woo. <laughs> Super excited for you. Now, does this count as date night? Because every Friday night here at our house is exactly the same. We have El Azteca. We split fajitas. We come back home. This time of the year, we'll watch a Cardinals game. And then at 9 o'clock, I'll wrap up my work. And then we'll go to Dairy Queen with, with Riley. And, and I'll get a peanut butter parfait. Or sometimes I'll get the Oreo cup faction. Sometimes I deviate. Yes. And we'll get a peanut butter cup blizzard. And we'll come nice. back and eat it, and that'll be our Friday night. But I mean, we sit in the love seat together. Oh, there you go. Is it a date night? I mean, I mean, it, it can be. Uh, but my date night is without Lucy, so I will not have. Well, we're any... without Mallory because now she has her own car. That's we true. Never, that's we true. We never see her anymore, and she has her own. She has her own job. She has her own yeah. car. Like she's MIA all the time. So, so yeah. mine is Sand's thirteen month old. So, yeah. or just Sand's sixteen year old. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> amazing. Once they get their own car, you just never see them. Hey, you know what? That's the dream, I thought. So <laughs> apparently. All right. When Pam Forster knows she's going to the magic for less travel. It's uh it's like it's like the genie, like poof, gone. It is. Yeah. It know, is. Poof, poof. And then we watch uh on patrol live. That's one of their main sponsors, is this little squirty stuff. Oh yeah, the poof. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> the yeah, yeah. Oh, in his mouth that freaks me out every time. He's like, Wah. I'm like gag. Okay, anyway, go ahead, Pam. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we um have date night often actually um but we do different things all the time like right there's no standard um but yeah this the past couple of years our travel schedule has been crazy so we have like date weeks <laughs> it seems <laughs> like um but yeah no it's it's good it's all you know i think it's i think it's fun to do you know stuff without your kids and with your kids both it is. so it's yeah. a good thing I mean, I'm looking forward to our cruise. It's in about 81 days. I mean, that'll be seven nights on the fantasy of just my wife and I. I mean, Mallory and Paige will be there. But, yeah. you know, I mean, like we get, here's what I'm excited about, Pam. And again, I've never had this happen on a cruise or anytime. We get on the ship on a Saturday and we don't have our first port date till Tuesday. Oh, oh wow. How That's awesome nice. is that? Two sea days to start. You'll get to do a lot of fun stuff too, because they'll have tons of activities and stuff yes. like that for you. So that's we recently we went on a cruise with Hannah. Um, we were on a Royal Caribbean ship, and we had a sea day, and then we had a Nassau day too. So which is sort of like another sea day for us. So we actually spent a lot of time, you know, on that ship, exploring that ship, doing all the things on that ship. And it was fun. We, I mean, we really had a good time. It's so weird though. I think as you become a travel advisor, um, 
one of the things is every time you travel, it's really hard to get out of that space where you're constantly looking for things that like you can tell your guests or mm -hmm. looking for mm -hmm. things to report to the team or whatnot. You sort of take on, it's like a different eye with that. And it's not, it's not that it's not as fun. It's just different. It's hard to get out of that mode and really sort of focus on what you're doing, but you're going to have a great time on the seven night cruise because mm -hmm. I think there's nothing more relaxing than that. Well, too, in the fantasy, I mean, I've only been on her once, but she is, I think, from the times I've been on her, she's my favorite ship. Like, yeah, I that's a great love, ship. I love the fantasy. I mean, it was just, it, it was a podcast cruise. We did a seven-night cruise. I think that's why I like it the most, because, like, we had the longest podcast cruise on it. And we, I mean, mm -hmm. I look back at the pictures of that one. That one was wild, because we, we had seven nights. I mean, it was crazy. We, went to right. the and we ended up at, I mean, that Margaritaville day. I, <laughs> yeah. you were in, we were in the pool with a guy from REO Speedwagon. We were. I mean, I don't know how yeah. that happened, but we were in the pool with a guy from REO Speedwagon. We all had clocks. Anyway, I can't wait. I don't know if that's gonna happen. We're not even going to Mark. We're not even going to the Western. What? Virginia. How could you not do? That? Oh my god! Happened, but do I mean the guy? The guy could have been just making it up too. He, he just could have just been a really old dude that like that like classic rock. I don't. Truth. Probably, totally could have been lying to us. We we, we would not have known. Uh, well, the clocks made it impossible for us to determine that. I yes, absolutely. <laughs> the clocks and the blender. But the thing was. I mean, we got pictures, but again, who, who's going to verify that? I don't know. But here's the thing. Like, I'm just excited because we've never been to the Eastern Caribbean. And I've been yeah. doing, like, watching all the vlogs and stuff. You know, anybody that's got any kind of footage on YouTube. I mean, just and it's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. It looks so beautiful. And I can't ride, wait to ride. Like, there's, like, a kind of a sketch little, like, Skyliner d thing in St. Thomas to, like, this bar and grill at the top of the hill. Oh, that's I can't wait to do that. It looks like a – so Ricky would know what I'm talking about. It kind of looks like a Fast Eddie's at the top of this uh bar the top of the mountain there where you got to take like a skyliner up there like you need to snorkel i know I you don't snorkel, snorkel with I your can't. girls you need I, to i can't breathe underwater like it's unnatural like so i no. real quick story then we're gonna get into today's top podcast because we gotta get to it. so <laughs> when i was an instructor at space camp right okay so <laughs> i shouldn't even tell this story but i will because i love you guys <laughs> I, I really shouldn't tell the story but i will so I, I taught one of my classes. I got to teach the advanced space camp for educators class because I don't know why I got this class, but I got the one group that was the advanced space camp for educators class. So it's like the highest level class of the teachers, right? For international class. So I had like the best of the best cl class for the week. <laughs> so we go through like all the hardest like stuff for the week. And one of the things they got to do for their their EVA for their extravehicular activity was that they got to go into the tank. So Space Camp down in Huntsville, they have a thirty five foot uh, like diving tank where you put on you put on the scuba gear and like you can go down to thirty five feet and like scuba dive. And then at the bottom of the tank, you build like this you know apparatus like you're in space. It's like the neutral buoyancy tank they have in Houston. They actually have one in, in Marshall Space Flight Center too. They used to. They just took it out anyway. So they asked me, Mike, do you want to go in with them? And so I can't swim that way. I'm not a good swimmer in the first place. You don't really have to swim to scuba dive, though, so it doesn't matter. But here's the thing. They told you, if you have asthma, you should never scuba dive. They, and, and so you got to take this class, right, before, you can, before you're allowed to go into the, into, they call it the tank. So I'm sitting through this class. It's like an hour long with all my teachers. And they show you, like, x-rays of lungs and stuff, like if you hold your breath, or if you have asthma and like of like exploding lungs. And so like I lied and I didn't say that I had asthma. I have asthma. So I lie. Right. So I tell them, Oh no, I'm good. I'm good. So I, the whole time I'm like, I shouldn't have lied. I should have told them I had asthma. So dude, they put, they put all the gear on me, dude. I got the wetsuit on. I got these big old heavy tanks. I got these tubes in my mouth and they put me in the water. And as soon as like, I got like where my face was like level with the water, I was like, I can't do this. I can't do it. I lied. I have asthma. I, I freaked out. I couldn't do it. And they're like, are you kidding me? The, the instructor was not happy. Cause I mean, like I was the instructor, but of course they had like scuba instructors that like, you know, drop you in the water. Like, so at that point I was just the leader of my team and I felt like an idiot, but I was like, I can't, I, I cause they, they tell you it'll kill you. And the, the whole thing is they tell you about the bends, right? Like they're like, Dude, if last thing, when you're at the bottom, 
don't freak out and like start swimming from the top. They're like, you will get these bends and like, it'll be like every muscle in your body will lock up. Cause ev- like the, the, your blood will boil. I'm like, Oh my God, what if I get down there and I freak out and my blood starts boiling it, cause there's windows like these kids at space camp while they're eating dinner, they can look in the sides and like watch everything that's going on. Like I'll be the entertainment like for dinner tonight. Like everybody will watch this, this, this space camp instructor to freak out, start swimming from the top. Ah, he starts freaking out cause he gets the bends halfway up and can't get there. They have to bring in five instructors to bring him out. He goes out on a gurney. I, I I couldn't do it, but that's my story. So that's why I don't scuba dive or uh, I don't even snorkel. I don't play with it. Yeah, I was going to say. Snorkeling snorkeling is very different. Scuba. Scuba diving. Very, very different. It's just I'm you're on top of the water. You're fine. I'm just, that. that's my story and I'm sticking to it. It freaked me out. I, had I need to fly story. down and take your girl snorkeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I let Mallory scuba with their snorkel with you. So anyway, let's, let's, let's do the show. But that's, uh, the, the, <laughs> you just saw, um, behind the, behind the scenes. So we learned that Mike here. is a liar. First right. of all. Yeah, sure I wanted to be there with my team. I really wanted to get in there because my team was egging me on. They're like, Mike, dude, you'll be fine. You'll be, it, cause you know, teachers, the teachers are not the, Teachers over summer break are not good influences. I will say that. Like, teachers are great people, but these teachers were all like, dude, just just do it. They, they, yeah, because it's like teachers it. gone wild. In the it was. They're like, dude, just Mike, you're going to be fine. Just get in. I was like, okay, fine. I will. Because, you know, we're, the, we're, all, we're all like a group here. We're a team. And then I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'll go get down there. I'm going to freak out and I'm going to die. So anyway, here, you know, I want to get the bends. Okay, so let's do this. What we're going to do is, like that commercial, like I talked about, <laughs> Right now, this show is so <laughs> far off the rails. Yeah, we is. are heading to a different town. Absolutely, we have lost cars. The caboose is gone. It gone. is. I'm just yes. glad I don't have the bends right now because that sounds super painful, and I don't want the bends and awkward. And I'm glad I'm, 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 there's no water anywhere near me. So. Okay, good. but I'm getting ready to go on a cruise, and guess what? Okay. I'm not scuba diving. Okay, so well, I'm going to start off with one right now. Okay. Okay. okay sure. I'm going on, I'm going on Why not? Trip. So right now, if you got, this is going to be me in just a little bit. And so this is a visualization just so that if you're taking a walk or if you, don't close your eyes, if you're driving, please, for the love of God, right now, somebody is sitting on the Disney fantasy on deck four. Thinking about dying. <laughs> no, nope. deck four starboard, which if you've ever gone on the Disney Cruise Line ship, that's the deck that has the walking deck, the, the, the running path. They're sitting on one of the blue loungers, just looking out over the ocean. It's sunset. Just taking it all in. They don't have to worry about work. They don't have to worry about school. They have nothing on their agenda, but sitting on this comfortable lounger, looking out over the ocean, and you can hear that that water lapping up against the side of the ship right there just kind of it makes almost like a like a comfortable hiss it's like a s- s- it's not a snake but if, you, if you've been there you know what i'm talking about but right now somebody's on the disney fantasy starboard side deck four blue lounge chair looking out and just taking it all and nothing better to do with her day they're just enjoying the day all right, that's my kickoff. That's where I'm going to be doing that soon. All right, Ricky, I'll let you take. Somewhere at the Disney parks or on a cruise ship, what is somebody doing right now at this moment? Oh, do I finally get to go? Oh, Sorry. okay, cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I pretty much, that was my like laying on the couch moment for today, but go ahead. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. Well, um, now that we're 20 minutes into the show, cool. Sorry, um, it's going to be a short one, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No. So, uh, you know, obviously we were just in Walt Disney World. So a lot of my right now in Walt Disney World are going to be things that we just kind of experienced because they were so great. And we did such, we had such a relaxing time. So right now in Walt Disney World, there is somebody who has either a Starbucks coffee or a Joffrey's coffee or some sort of drink. And they are sitting under the canopy that is at the exit of Tower of Terror. And they are listening to the music of the Tower of Terror from, you know, the, that's coming from the attraction. And they are just actually chilling, relaxing, enjoying their drink, 
talking with their significant other and just really having a nice time. This is usually the spot where a lot of people sit when they're waiting for their uh, family members to get off the attraction. And Brian and I just found it kind of by accident. Uh, we were I was looking for, there's this um this cookie that they have at the exit of Tower of Terror at the Joffrey's. Um, and it's a Tower of Terror like cookie, um, themed cookie. And it was, but it was later in the day. So I was like, I'm sure this cookie is probably gone by now. And of course it was, uh, but it's, it's very elusive. I'm just saying, but since we were over there, it was very nice to just kind of sit under the canopy and relax with the coffee that we then had in our hands and just kind of hang out and talk. And it was, it was magical. <laughs> I love these shows because I can picture that. Like I, and you're right now, literally somebody probably is sitting in that exact location yeah. because the parks are so busy and probably just like, taking it in. With and, and the park was busy and we were like, we're just enjoying our time there because we knew that the parks are busy and we we're just like, eh, might as well sit here and drink a coffee and just enjoy our time together best times all right pam give us a i love this because the visualization pops directly into my head yeah i agree so right now and this is what i would probably be doing um someone is getting ready to walk in to narcusis to have dinner tonight what has happened is they spent a great day in the parks right they had a good time or maybe they were by the pool or did all those things and then at some point they're like well we have dinner tonight around 7 7 15. we need to go back sort of get cleaned up change our clothes head over to the grand floridian um and go to dinner and you sort of park the car or take transportation over there. You walk in through the lobby, you hear the piano player or um, see whatever sites are going on at the Grand Floridian. And you walk through that lobby and out the back door and you go past one of my favorite pools on Disney property, which is that main pool there at the Grand Floridian. You can hear the music and that pool, they always have sort of a themed music, right? It's themed to the Grand Floridian. You can always hear it. You can hear it has sort of little bubblers, you know, and you can hear those and you can hear kids, you know, having a good time and you're starting to walk back towards the back of the resort there. And you can start to smell narcoosies at some point, right? You can like, you get that smell, like you can smell a steak cooking or smell, you know, something cooking. And you walk in, um, open the door there, and you're greeted there by the staff there. And it's just, you know, that you're in for like a good night. And I can picture that. I've done it so many times. It's just each part of it, you know, I, I enjoy each part of it, just like getting there. It just feels like, I don't know, really comfortable because I've done it so many times. I love that you gave it like time and place too, because like you've, you've had a fun day in the park, you're getting ready right. to have a great meal. It's a transitional time of your day, right? You, you, you're it moving is. from one part of the day to the next. And that happens on every vacation, every day of your it vacation. It does. It does. Yeah. New adventures for sure. All right. So I'm going to go out to the West Coast. I'm going to Disneyland. And right now, Walt Disney World, somebody. You mean Disneyland? To me. Is that what I, I, I you said? You said Walt oh, Disney World? That's fine. Duh. It's been a day. Disneyland somebody and this is where i'd like to be is sitting at my table at harbor galley in disneyland park which harbor galley if you don't know it's a counter service location right there in new orleans it's right there on the rivers of america it's across there from uh haunted mansion kind of by caddy corner from pirates and it's just got it, it's got a lot going on so what i it was somebody i'm hoping that they're sitting there right now with one of those bowls of clam chowder because they serve that there now they hopefully they also grabbed those cookies that are all the rave the chocolate chip cookies which i have not had yet they were no. kind of like i noticed them when i was out there in january and i was like i should have got them but they've become like all the rave since all the rage uh but that's a great location to sit because you get to see everything happening on the rivers of america now i'd, be, I'd like to do this around dinner time for me dinner time is about four o'clock um for most yes, people like yeah. so Maybe around, you know, is that transitional time of the day, you know, it's, uh, you know, dinner time, whatever that is. But, you know, the, the boats are everything's still happening on the rivers of America. You got people still doing the canoes. Canoes are still going because I think that's so fun. Like that is one of those things that it's just fun to see guests doing the canoes at Disneyland. 
it, it, I still can't believe that that happens. Uh, you know, and then you got the sailing ship Columbia out there and the Mark Twain. Like, it, it's a busy river at Disneyland. It's fun to watch to your left as you're snacking there. But also you got the hustle and bustle of New Orleans Square to your right. Of course, Haunted Mansion's closed right now, but under normal circumstances, it would be open. You see the queue for pirates. Um, you got, you know, just that walkway there going on. And of course, shortly you'll have, you know, Fantasma getting ready to take take place here in, in late May. Uh, but it, it's a great location there. And of course, you know, Tiana's Bayou Adventure will be just right over the hill here shortly too as well. So it's it, 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 I think it's it's a kind of an underrated um, little counter service location to sit and just kind of people watch. And so right now, think about it. There's people sitting there right now just taking it all in. If you want to people watch, that's one of the best spots at Disneyland, I think. So there you go. Yeah, that's a good location. It really is. And it's you really feel like you're sort of in the middle of it all right there. You can, you know, you can hear New Orleans Square is right there. You can see Frontierland. You can hear Big Thunder. The all of that is happening around you, and you can hear the Haunted Mansion too. Um, all the sound effects that come from there. So yeah, I love that area. Yeah, I called my wife from there in January when the Haunted Mansion holiday was going on, and she's like, "What? What is that?" Yes. <laughs> That's that's Haunted Mansion in the background. She's like, that's pretty cool. I was like, I know this is the great, greatest spot ever. I was like, I'm sitting here eating a, I'm eating clam chowder off a bread bowl. I was like, I'm living my best life. It's the best. And it was just like, it was kind of a little nippy that night. I mean, I was you know outside and I was right on the river and eating clam chowder on a nippy night off of a bread bowl. I was like, God, I've died and gone to heaven because I love. <laughs> oh yeah, I was like, this is the best. All right, Ricky, give us another. All right, again, another one that I just kind of experienced. Uh, so right now at Walt Disney World, someone is getting ready for their dinner reservation at Sanaa. Uh, but they get to Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge a little bit early so that they can take in the fantastic Savannah that's there at the resort. Uh, they can go out there and look at the animals as they're eating their, di their dinner for the night. Uh, and it's really uh, fun to, you know, see the different animals that we only saw wildebeests this last time, but, uh, you know, some items we've seen giraffes and things like that. So that's kind of a really cool experience. And then you still have a little bit of extra time. So you make your way, uh, to the community hall and you go and you play a game of pool. Um, maybe you play a game of Mancala, which again, are two things that we did. Uh, and just really enjoy the time that you have together as a family, uh, because these are things that you don't necessarily do when you're at home. Uh, but when you're on vacation and you have time to just sit back and relax, you can do these kind of family activities together. I played Mancala so much with my gifted students all the time. That was the I hadn't year. played it in probably... 15 years maybe a little bit longer than that uh we used to play it all the time when we lived back home in st louis we would sit on the back porch my friends and i would uh hang out and just you know play mancala and play card games and stuff like that and and just enjoy our time together so i had and i was dating brian at the time so like it's definitely been a hot minute but uh yeah it was it was really good to just go back and, and play the game i actually had to relearn how to play because i'm like okay i know it involves dropping the, yep, the, the drop pebbles in the different up, ones up, but yeah across, across the way and grab your no. your <laughs> but uh, it was, stones it's just nice to, you know, be able to have that, you know, kind of time together when you don't normally do that on a daily basis. So, you know, some somewhere, sometime, somebody is is bonding with their family again in a fun, unique way where they're playing board games and pool and, you know, stuff like that. I was doing that right now. I mean, think yeah. about it right now. Somebody's probably sitting there doing that. And that's the cool thing. That's, that's what I love about when people ask, well, why do you like Walt Disney World? Because I like thinking about that. Like right now, as I'm sitting back in St. Louis, this stuff's happening down there right now for somebody. Like, yeah, it is. It, it's nonstop. All right, Pam, give us another. So right now, someone is walking into Epcot because they have park hopped and they want to see the nighttime show at Epcot uh, Luminous that night. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get in there. They thought since uh, Flower and Garden was still going on, they'd take advantage to grab a couple of snacks from the booths, right? And walk around World Showcase. And at some point, they're going to find a great place to watch the show and sort of 
hang out, maybe get a, a send someone to get snacks for them, be the runner, be the snack runner, right? Once you picked out a great spot from which to hear it. But as they're walking through World Showcase, they're also going to hear the different entertainment. They're going to smell all the different food. They're going to stop at a shop here and there. I think that's what makes me like um, the World Showcase so much and Epcot so much. It's just there's so much variety. You can just do so many different things. And I love that they have a show now to end the night. And I mean, they've always had a show, but I think for a while, um, people didn't love Harmonious and you had Epcot forever. And now you have Luminous, which I think everyone has sort of agreed is a good show and they enjoy seeing it. So they get to do that. And it's just sort of the icing on a great day at Epcot. Yeah, it kind of brings it all together, kind of a thematic. It does. It does. It really has like, I think those feelings that Epcot, you know, that Walt wanted to bring to Epcot too. Just this whole, we're together, we're doing this together, we're one world kind of thing. So like that. Here's mine. And I, I love seeing this. And I know this is happening right now because it has, it has to, because it's a, you know, nonstop cycle. So right now, over at All Star Sports, I'm just picking any resort, but I'm I'm picturing in my mind's eye All Star Sports. There's a family pulling in. They're in a minivan. Say license plates from Indiana. Just picking any state. <clears throat> family pops out. Young family. Little girl, dragging her suitcase. Little bitty suitcase. Minnie Mouse on it. Very first vacation to Walt Disney World. She's dragging that sucker in. They're going into the main check-in area. They're standing there. They get to the check-in desk. They're meeting the cast member for the first time. This is their first Walt Disney World vacation. They're, they're, they're getting their little pins. They talk to the cast member. Cast member gives them their pins. A little girl couldn't be happier. A little brother, maybe a couple years older. He's excited. They get a little Mickey sticker. He puts it on himself. Mom and dad are kind of so excited because, you know, they've waited forever for this vacation. They've seen the commercials. They don't know what they're doing. Think about this. We've all been there. This is their first time. They're unsure about how this is all going to go about. They don't know the tricks. They don't listen to podcasts. They don't go on vlogs. They don't listen to, they don't go on message boards, but they're at Walt Disney World. They just know this is what they want to do. They want to come down here and have a good time. So they're at the check-in desk. Kids, little girl's got the suitcase. She's got the button. The little boy's got a sticker. He's all wild, crazy. They're walking. So now they get the room assignment. They got the little map. They don't know where they're going, but they got a map probably be 30 minutes before they find the room because they don't know where they're going they walk past the store and the food court oh my gosh how cool is this you know they see all that but then they get out and they see the pool have you not seen this family okay you are you visualizing with me everybody 100%. this family they're like losing their minds right they're at all-star sports they're not at the polynesian they're not at animal kingdom lodge they're not at the wilderness lodge they're not at the beach club they're at all-star sports and it's still amazing. I think sometimes as Disney fans, we forget this. There's magic at every Walt Disney World resort. This family is having the time of their life already. Have they been to the Magic Kingdom? No. Have they been to Epcot Studios, Animal Game? No. They're already in amazement just seeing the pool at all-star sports because they've arrived. You know, they're on vacation. The kids want to jump in the pool. They walk past the, they walk past the, uh, the playground. Oh my gosh, can we play the playground? They get to the room. The kids are already staking out their beds. You know, they're wanting to get into their swimsuits. Mom and dad are like, no, no, no. We got to go over to, we want to go to Epcot tonight because like Pam said, there's fireworks. We went to the Magic Kingdom because it's only five o'clock. We want to see, uh, you know, the fireworks there. We want to ride some rides. But, you know, we'll just leave it at that. But how many times have we seen that family on their first trip just wide-eyed, we know, and this is happening right now, pick your resort, but I'm just picturing a family at All-Star Sports tonight. But like you, you could tell because that little bitty travel suitcase that probably only holds like a couple of Barbies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just that she can have the experience. It doesn't probably right. hold those. But like, you know that they don't know what they're doing. But who cares? They're in their glory. Like, let them be in their glory. It doesn't matter. Like. Pam Forrester, is that not the best when you see that family? Like, I want to go back and be that family again for like a day, you know? Agreed. I, I think it's, you know, I'm often reminded of the 
Walt Whitman quote, and of course it was again made famous by Ted Lasso that you got to be curious and not judgmental. And I think as Disney fans, so often our minds are geared towards, I will utilize my time the most efficiently, the I will never do this, I will always do this, I will arrive prepared. And golly, isn't there something really magical about a vacation where you don't have a schedule. You don't oh, yeah. have to worry about what you're missing because yeah. you're doing something. Like for them, this is the best part. Like this is all that thing. And I I really love seeing that. Like I, I often say to myself, that's not how you would do it, but that's okay. That's how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, it, there's just something about vacation and that's different for every person. Like I hate to hear people say, well, I'm going to take a pool day. Oh, you're wasting a day. What do you no. mean you're wasting a day? <laughs> I, I read three books today by the pool. I had a really good drink. I took a nap. I mean, yeah, yeah uh, this sounds like vacation to me. But just like the the description that you, you brought up there, it was like that family is living their best life. And I, I like that. Sometimes it would be nice to go back and not know what you know. So. I mean, they're going to make 10 mistakes by our account, you know, like by yes. the, by the questions we get every Wednesday, like, oh yeah, you just, you made, you're not efficient, but you know what? Efficiency, <laughs> there, there's a time and a place for efficiency, you know, Agreed. we want to be efficient, not waste your time because time's money. We say that we've said that a thousand times on this right. show, time's money on Disney vacation, but not for this family, not today, mm -hmm. not today. Let them make their mistakes. Yeah. Let them make their memories. They'll yeah. have a great time doing it. Absolutely. <laughs> it's been so much. Ricky, I mean, you're up next. You got your last one here. But, I mean, isn't it awesome seeing that family just kind of just like, ah, we don't know what we're doing. It's great. It is. Because, you know, at one point or another, we were all there. That was so. awesome. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. It may have been a while, but yeah, it's been a, it's been it's a, been a, a hot minute. minute for that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But uh, we were all there at one point. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So my last one again uh, is something that we experienced this weekend. And I think you'll notice like a trend in all of my things. It's all about kind of stopping and smelling the roses and all of the things that I've mentioned. So you're walking through Frontierland, you smell the popcorn, and you're like, oh my goodness, I've got to get that. Because that's always how it is when you smell Disney popcorn, is like, you may have just eaten, it's kind of like when you go to the movie theaters, you may have just eaten an entire meal, and then you smell Disney popcorn, and you're like, well, I'm going to have to get some of that. So you end up getting a, a, a carton of popcorn. And you're shoveling it in your mouth as you're walking through Frontierland because, again, as one does, you don't eat popcorn, you know, gingerly. You literally grab a handful and shove it in your mouth. Scoop. Yeah, exactly. And you you realize maybe instead of walking and dropping half the popcorn on the ground, maybe I should sit down uh, because I'm literally spilling all the popcorn I just paid for. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to sit down. And so you sit down in Frontierland, uh, kind of by Country Bear Jamboree, and then all of a sudden you hear music, and you're like, what on earth is going on? It is not a parade, friends. It is instead a Frontierland hoedown, uh, which you were yes. not expecting to experience, but out comes Chippendale, uh, Horace Horse Collar, Clayla Brow Cow, uh, one of the a couple of the Country Bear Jamboree characters, I think, I know Big Al is one of them. Uh, and you just watch as they do line dances and the hokey pokey and just have a good time. And you want all these families and kids and everybody just come out of the woodwork to dance with the characters and enjoy. And you're just sitting there enjoying your popcorn watching. It's It literally is. You're just eating popcorn while you're, you're being entertained. So that's another one of the things that just happened to us. I hope that's happening for somebody right now. I hope it's happening for somebody too, because it sure surprised us. We were like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> uh, that is it's so crazy. fun though. That's awesome. The, yeah. the Frontier Land Hoedown. Yeah. I don't know if that's the official name, but that's what I'm calling it. So it always <laughs> is like a hoedown. It is. So that's why I'm like, I think it's it's gotta be like the Frontier Land Hoedown. I mean, that's gotta be what it is. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's cool because Country Bears is kind of in transition right now. So they could have, you know, a little interaction out there. Me the Country Bears is down. Mm. I mean, I got, you know, we got, it's going to start singing Garth Brooks. Stop. 
Right now. All right, Pam, bring us home, Pam Forrester. <laughs> bring us home. All right. So right now, and I, you said well, I took this assignment very literally because they're all right, like I at know. the same evening. Oh, yes, yeah, 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 they yeah, yeah. are. But right now, someone is going to their Walt Disney Resort campfire. Yes, together. <laughs> They're going to roast some marshmallows on Mickey Mouse himself because he gives them out for free there. Nice. They may spring for the s'mores kit, though, I will say. You know, God, do yeah. that. Yeah, don't be cheap. Go for it. Get, 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 get. Right? Yes. Exactly. And then after they're done with that, they're going to head over to the location for Movie Under the Stars. And they're going to see one of the Disney movies. Uh, they might have seen it a hundred times. Um, when we were there, oh, I can't remember. We saw a couple different ones, but they were all ones we had seen. But it was just so fun to be outside enjoying the beautiful, beautiful weather, seeing the, um, the screen and whatnot, watching some of the kids who go off the rails inevitably at some point. Mom and dad are losing their hair and... Steve and I by ourselves, we got to sit back and watch from afar as parents chase children. There was two brothers that I think were beating the crap out of each other for an extended <laughs> period of time. You your kids. You're just like, oh. <laughs> Whatever. I don't even know where mom and dad were for those two. <laughs> I was like, they were kind of doing it playfully, but kind of was worried there might be a little injury. I'm like, am I going to have to step in here or not? But no, they were okay. They worked it out. So anyways, but it's just like one of those really cool, fun activities at a Disney resort. And another bit of magic that you can find outside the parks when you're staying at one of the Disney resorts. And it makes things like that make it totally worth it for me. So You're like, don't make me go into Crockett, Crockett's Tavern <laughs> and find your parents. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to drag your parents out of the lab. <laughs> it's, like bowling, it's like at the bowling alley back in the day or something exactly exactly <laughs> exactly but yeah oh, no, that's no a skin. good time that is good well hey we're, you know, we're rapid there but hopefully we kind of took you on a little a little visual vacation to the disney parks ships and just uh you know something fun here on a friday but here's where we're going to continue this couple places Come over to the VOGP Clubhouse right now. It's uh, vrguestpodcast.com slash discord. If you haven't been there already, come on over. It's like a 24-7 live chat room slash message board. And we're going to have a thread there and add your little uh, situation. What's happening right now at Walt Disney World? What pops into your head that you would just love to see? And just add that. We'll continue the thread. We'll all have fun with that here on a Friday and then Sunday night, Scott's going to join me and this topic will be on the table. So give us a call and add your visualization of what's happening right now at a Disney destination. We'd love to have your two cents on that as well. Don't forget our show is brought to you by the magic for less travel. We'd love to help you plan an amazing Disney adventure, whether it's Disney cruise line, Walt Disney world, Disneyland, even adventures by Disney. Just swing by the website over at the magic for less.com this weekend. Check out all the specials. And you'll see that it costs nothing extra to book with the Magic for Less. You're going to get first class service each and every time. So just that's all there is. Just check it out over at themagicforless.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link. It's brguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. We really appreciate that. And thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. Thanks again for that. And you can support us just $5 a month and you get our bonus show. It's called Mike in the Midwest. So come on over to patreon.com slash brguestpodcast. Give us a follow on the social media. I'm at brguestmike. Ricky's at Ricky Nibs, R I K K I N I B S. Pam's at TMFLT Pam. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and threads. And again, Sunday night, seven o'clock Eastern, six o'clock Central. Give us a call. We'll be on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch for the BOGP open line. In between them, we'll catch you over in the clubhouse. All right, you guys have a great weekend. We are going to jump out of here, but we'll be back again with you on Sunday night. So until then, you guys stay safe, stay healthy. And we'll see you real soon. That was fun. That was good. All right. So you guys will both be gone next week. Both be gone. We'll have fun. Yes. I will be in the land. So awesome. All right. Bye. See y'all. Bye, guys. See ya. All right. See you guys. Bye. Have a good yeah. night. You too. Thanks. <laughs>